Good morning. I am Mark Wingate, the Deputy District Engineer for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, New Orleans District, and it is my privilege to serve as your MC today for the Mississippi River Deepening Partnering Ceremony. It is certainly my honor to welcome the Honorable John Bell Edwards, Governor of the State of Louisiana, Major General Diana Holland, Commanding General of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Mississippi Valley Division, Mr. Rene Laparolery, Multimodal Commissioner of the State of Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development, and Colonel Stephen F. Murphy, Commander of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, New Orleans District. I certainly want to welcome many of our partners, stakeholders, and guests who are watching live on Facebook today for this important announcement. Thank you for joining us. We have asked each of you to join us physically and virtually this morning to mark an important step which continues the investment in navigation along the lower Mississippi River. Today, the Corps and the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development have the necessary agreements in place to initiate the next phase of the Mississippi River Ship Channel Project to deepen the Mississippi River deep draft channel between Baton Rouge and the Gulf of Mexico from 45 to 50 feet. Without further hesitation, at this time, I have the privilege and honor of introducing the Honorable John Bell Edwards, Governor of the State of Louisiana. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, and it's great to be down in New Orleans with all of you today. I want to thank General Holland for coming down and for your work. Colonel Murphy, thank you very much for supporting uh, the State of Louisiana, being a tremendous partner for us as well. And Commissioner Laparolery, thank you very much for, for your work on behalf of the state of Louisiana. Uh, you know, it feels like the COVID-19 crisis has put everything on hold, uh, just about every aspect of our personal lives, uh, whether you're in business or you're an employee or, uh, you know, obviously in government as well. And, and that is true in many ways. But the fact of the matter is we continue working every day uh, to move our state forward, to, to strengthen our state, to promote our recovery. Uh, and nothing symbolizes that better or evidences that stronger uh, than this project that we're talking about uh, today. The Louisiana Department of Transportation Development on behalf of Louisiana uh, entered into a financial cost share agreement uh, with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to study the feasibility of deepening the Mississippi River uh, to 50 feet from the Gulf uh, to Baton Rouge. Uh, today, that study gets put into action. Uh, and, and action is always better than, than study, although those studies are critically important. But the fact of the matter is we wouldn't be here today uh, talking about this were it not for uh, the tremendous work uh, of Lieutenant General Todd Simonite uh, and his very capable team, uh, and that includes Major General Diana Holland uh, with the Mississippi Valley Division and Colonel Stephen Murphy uh, with the New Orleans District. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the work of the State Department of Transportation and Development under the capable leadership of Dr. Sean Wilson, who is the secretary. Uh, and he is absent today, but representing uh, DOTD is the Multimodal Commissioner, Renee Laparola, and I want to thank her and her staff. And I'm going to come back up in just a moment and conclude my remarks, but to give you more of the details of this project from the state's perspective, I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Laparola to come up. Uh, and speak for a few minutes, and then I'll come back up uh, when she concludes her remarks. Thank you, Governor. Um, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers determined a 7.2 to 1 benefit to cost ratio, which does not include an anticipated $40 billion in new facility investments. A $125 million return to state and federal governments, flood mitigation, or beneficial dredge material to protect the coast and entryway to the river. The core feasibility study resulted in a director's report authorizing the deepening of the Mississippi River from the Gulf of Mexico through the port of Baton Rouge. The report was signed on August 3, 2018, by the Director of Civil Work, Works. Army, from, from, the, from the Army Corps of Engineers. 
knowing this and understanding the value of a deepened river. The Edwards administration, under Secretary Wilson's leadership, began planning to fund our portion of this very important project. Simultaneously, the Office of Multimodal Commerce in DOTD began working with the congressional delegation and key Senate staff to have language inserted into the 2016 Water Resources Development Act, reducing the cost share for non-federal sponsors of deepening projects greater than 45 feet and up to 50 feet. With the support of our congressional delegation, this language changed the cost share for the state as the non-federal sponsor from 50 percent to 25 percent. Since the signing of the director's report, the state of Louisiana and DOTD, the Louisiana congressional delegation, and numerous stakeholders in Louisiana and along the entire length of the Mississippi River have advocated for the full funding of the Mississippi River Deepening Project. While 100 percent federal funding has not yet been achieved, the advocacy has led to the New Orleans District receiving the federal sponsor's cost share of 75 percent for the project. According to recent research by the Soy Transportation Co Coalition, the 256-mile stretch of the Mississippi River from Baton Rouge to the Gulf accounts for 60 percent of U.S. soybean exports, along with 59 percent of corn exports, by far the leading export region for both commodities. One foot of additional draft will accommodate approximately $1 million in additional cargo, enabling shippers post-deepening to use the Mississippi River and its inland tributaries versus the more expensive land bridges to the coast ports. One study estimates markets using the Mississippi River shipping channel will move 300 miles to the west, markets will move 300 miles to the west, and 150 miles to the east using the less expensive water transportation and connectivity to the larger ships. The total estimated cost of the deepening project is $237 million, and as the non-federal sponsor, the, the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development has an estimated cost share of $81 million. For those not familiar with the budgeting process, if Secretary Wilson were here, he would tell you that this would not have been possible if this governor had not been firm on infrastructure funding. Without any hesitancy, his directive to include funding projects such as the Comete River Diversion and the Mississippi River Deepening Project would not be a reality were it not for his leadership. So thank you, Governor Edwards, uh, for your leadership in multimodal infrastructure and I would be remiss if I didn't ma mention that yesterday the United States House of Representatives passed the 2020 Florida Act so that the Corps can con continue its great work with uh, partnership with local and state governments. So thank you all. And by the way, that Florida Act does contain some provisions that are very helpful to the state of Louisiana with respect to our payment of, the, of our responsibility related to hurricane risk, reduc uh, risk reduction system as well. Uh, and we're looking forward to that uh, becoming law. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Laparolary. So for those who are unfamiliar with global trade routes, the expansion of the Panama Canal uh, created a new race to remain competitive uh, due to the size of ships and the changing patterns of consumption of goods. It became imperative to improve the access for larger vessels to the lower Mississippi River deep water port system. The Mississippi River Deepening Project will enable and expand global markets for Louisiana farmers and manufacturers and citizens who depend on the import and export of goods for jobs and quality of life. Further, a deepened Mississippi River will, uh, will be an economic superhighway uh, for the state of Louisiana and for the United States of America. The river and its tributaries account for over $750 billion of the nation's economy and more than 2.4 million jobs. Here in Louisiana, one in every five jobs is directly or indirectly tied to our ports, and they make up almost 23 percent of the dollar amount of the state's goods and services. 
Consistent with my administration's commitment to delivering infrastructure and taking full advantage of federal resources that we send to Washington, D.C., I'm excited to have made the financial commitments to facilitate this very important project. In addition to the congressional delegation that's worked hand in hand with us throughout this process, I especially want to thank and applaud the Louisiana Legislature for supporting the funding that we proposed for the non-federal cost share during this past legislative session. Uh, in 2018, I wrote a letter to every governor whose state touches the Mississippi River and encouraged them to do their part to advocate for this project. Their economic success derived from river activity is inextricably linked to Louisiana's ability to get and maintain 50 feet. The United States Soybean Board announced in July of last year a $2 million allocation to help offset the planning, design, and research costs of deepening the lower Mississippi River from 45 feet to 50 feet. Renee explained to you why this happened. 60 percent of the grain exported from the United States of America flows down the Mississippi River. With a deepened river, that will actually increase to 70 percent. And it's also why we have, by tonnage, uh, the largest port in the United States of America, uh, the Port of South Louisiana. Uh, they actually funded this from the soybean checkoff funds, uh, which can only be used to enhance the value and preference for U.S. soybeans. For a transformative project like this, we absolutely have to get started if we ever hope to finish it. And today is the beginning of that process. Uh, the river that is flowing behind me will be much more competitive in tomorrow's economy than it is in today's economy. And this is incredibly important as we play to our strengths in Louisiana and take advantage of all of the gifts that God gave us. You know, second only to the people of Louisiana, our most precious and most valuable natural resource, uh, probably is the Mississippi River. Uh, and it is, it is in our interest in Louisiana to make sure that if anything in the central part of the United States of America, if they want to receive goods in commerce or if they want to export, uh, that they have an incentive to use that river. That's how we're going to grow our ports. That's how we're going to grow jobs. We're going to continue to diversify our economy, and we're going to be more successful. So deepening of this river is part of that strategic advantage that we have, and it's part of our strategic plan to further enhance that advantage. We are already a world leader with our inland and deep water ports, and I want to see Louisiana be absolute number one in terms of bulk, bulk break, and containers. Uh, you know, when I became governor, the first thing I did, despite the $2 billion budget deficit that I inherited, is we doubled our investment annually in the Port Priority Program. Uh, but there's so much more to be done to ensure that we're spending those limited dollars on the best and highest use in the port community. And the ability to work hand in hand in close partnership with the Corps is making this possible. And I'm asking the entire port community in Louisiana to work with Secretary Wilson, with Se Commissioner Laparolri, to put their heads together and continue to develop more strategic plans uh, for the state of Louisiana where we can leverage resources, build on our natural assets and strengths, and develop a plan and implement it to make this river the busiest and most productive that it has ever been. By signing this agreement today between the State of Louisiana and the Corps of Engineers, we signify the launching of a project which will put international markets on notice while securing Louisiana's system of ports and waterways as the gateway to the heartland of America. So this is a big deal. I thank uh, all the members of the press for, for being here today. And again, I want to thank General Holland uh, and Colonel Murphy for their partnership. So thank you all very much, and God bless. Thank you, Governor Edwards, and thank you, Commissioner Laparolary. At this time, I would like to introduce someone who may be the newest member of the Mississippi Valley Division and New Orleans District Team, Major General Diana Holland, Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Mississippi Valley Division. So as Mark mentioned, I'm Major General Diana Holland, and I command the Mississippi Valley Division of the Corps of Engineers. 
and today I'm representing Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, our Chief of Engineers. It is an honor to join you today in New Orleans and to recognize and celebrate a major milestone, the signing of the Project Partnership Agreement between the Army Corps of Engineers and the State of Louisiana. As the Governor's already mentioned, under normal conditions, a PPA signing would be a huge event and attended by many partners, contributors, beneficiaries, and Corps employees. But like most events across America, these days, in the interest of safety, we're relying on virtual capabilities to showcase this important event. So I'd like to start by thanking a few people. First, of course, is Governor Edwards, who has been a true advocate for this project. It is great to see you again, sir. Thanks to the Louisiana Department of Transportation, led by Secretary Wilson, and represented on site today, Commissioner Laparolery. The Department of Transportation serves as our principal partner and the state sponsor for this deepening project. Next, thank you to the champions such as the Soy Transportation Coalition and Mike Steenhook and the Big River Coalition, specifically longtime partner and friend Sean Duffy, for their support to help us get here today. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to the core team, Colonel Steve Murphy, Mark Wingate, and the entire New Orleans district which has worked tirelessly over many, many years to maintain the channels of this portion of the Mississippi River, making the navigation mission possible, oftentimes through tough conditions, and most recently within a COVID environment. Your work here matters, and we thank you. The governor has already highlighted many of the benefits of this deepening project, as he called it, an economic superhighway transporting greater amounts of cargo into the state's critical ports, bringing growth and prosperity to Louisiana. I represent a larger team that oversees work along the entire Mississippi River and the major tributaries which flow into it, and I can attest to the fact that this improvement is vitally important to the entire region and ultimately the nation. This part of the river connects America's heartland to the global economy, as mentioned, more than 60% of our nation's agricultural production is transported along the Mississippi River, responsible for creating hundreds of billions of dollars in GDP and supporting millions of jobs. By deepening the channel from 45 to 50 feet, ships will be able to carry significantly more cargo. Five feet doesn't sound like much. Frame of reference, I'm about five feet tall. Well, I'll give myself an, an, an inch, actually five foot one, but translated into capacity of this strategic channel, an additional five feet can make the difference of more than 125 million annually in net benefits. This is truly a worthy investment, and the Corps of Engineers is proud to be a part of it. Again, thank you for being here or for watching. Thank you, Governor Edwards, the state of Louisiana, and many, many partners who have made this day possible. And congratulations on leading the way in bolstering America's economic security and ensuring our competitive edge. It's an honor to serve with you. Thank you. Thank you, General Holland. At this time, I would like to introduce our final speaker today, the commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, New Orleans District, Colonel Stephen F. Murphy. So good morning. It's an honor on behalf of my team to welcome you here to the New Orleans District. It truly is a privilege to uh, not only have you here, Governor, but uh, Ms. Laparolery, General Holland, thank you so much for traveling. Uh, especially in this COVID environment. We truly appreciate it. But in this COVID environment, we really haven't been able to have the folks who have contributed, contributed a significant amount over the last, really, decades on this project. So for those of you who are online, on Facebook Live, really want to send you a special thanks um, for your participation. We wish you could be here. I want to spend a, uh, extend a special thanks to Governor Edwards. Um, he has been a phenomenal partner to the Corps of Engineers. I've been in command a year, and I have truly experienced a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder experience with his administration on a number of projects and issues. And, Governor, it's an honor, truly, because this is the first time that any governor of Louisiana has ever visited the New Orleans District. So welcome. We're glad you're here. 
So all great projects begin with great partnerships, and we've truly enjoyed the partnerships we've enjoyed today. And I, I will follow suit with the previous speakers and just say a few brief thanks. I uh, won't belabor the point. Our non-federal sponsor is the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. Dr. Wilson has been an outstanding partner. He's actually our partner on numerous projects here in Louisiana for the New Orleans District Corps of Engineers. But for him and his team, a lot of effort has gone over the years, but especially in the last six months to get us where we are today, I just want to say a special thanks because there's been a lot of diligent effort. And Ms. Laparolary, it's an honor to meet you and thank you for your efforts as well. Uh, I also want to say thank you to the stakeholders. So General Holland uh, made special mention of the Big River Coalition and Sean Duffy. And I won't belabor her point, but I will say I've met no bigger advocate for the Mississippi River in this project than Sean Duffy and the Big River Coalition. I don't think I've been to a conference in the last year here in Louisiana or even in Washington, D.C. that had to do with navigation or the Mississippi River where I didn't run into Sean and his team. So Sean, thank you to you and your team. And the same can be said of the Soy Transportation Commission with Mike Steenhook and his team and the United Soy Soybean Board whose commitment to seeing this project su succeed was demonstrated just like the governor alluded to with uh, their allocation of $2 million in funding towards the deepening. I could spend all morning thanking a lot of the partners that have uh, really joined with us in this partner, the river pilots, the ports, the Coast Guard, and so many others. So if you're watching this online from the Corps of Engineers from the New Orleans District, we want to say a special thank you. Finally, I'd be remiss if I did not specifically thank the many members of Congress and their staff who, because they understood the strategic value of this project, not just to the state of Louisiana, but to the entire nation, advocated and advocated very recently for it to, see, to receive the funding that allows us to be here today. No Corps of Engineers Civil Work project sees the light of day without authorization or appropriation, and their engagement and cooperation helped get us across the goal line. I think it's also worth mentioning that in addition in just to helping get this project funded, that Congress provided us and uh, the Corps an incredibly innovative tool that will help us execute this deepening project. This, this tool came in the form of a bill passed in December of 2019. It's called the Gulf Coast uh, Regional Demonstration Program, excuse me, the Gulf Post Coast Regional Demonstration Program. And what this does for the Corps is it allows us to address dredging and construction of the channel deepening project as a regional enterprise, not just a district effort. So many thanks to uh, our congressional partners. So what does this project look like? There's a lot of history here. The, the deepening of the Mississippi River Channel certainly is not new. It was authorized almost 35 years ago. Two of the three originally planned construction phases were completed within about 10 years of its authorization. That was first the deepening of the river from 40 to 45 feet from the Gulf of Mexico to Donaldson, and then shortly thereafter from uh, Donaldson to Baton Rouge. And so where does that leave us? Today, actually two days ago, we signed the official par project partnership agreement with Dr. Wilson with DOTD, and what that allows is us to transition into the third phase of the deepening project, which you've already heard about, which is deepening the channel from 45 to 50 feet, and this all the way from the Gulf to the Baton Rouge. Since the river is naturally deep in most areas, and many people don't know this, I didn't realize this. For example, the river behind me is over 100 feet deep. This is an incredibly deep river in many areas. The entire 256 mile stretch between the Gulf and Baton Rouge does not need to be deepened. The Corps, in partnership with the state of Louisiana, will actually only dredge about 75 non-contiguous miles of that 256. So the project's focus will be deepening the areas in the channel that are shallower and tend to shoal quickly, namely those areas south of New Orleans at the mouth of the river and Southwest Pass, and an area between New Orleans and Baton Rouge that we call the crossings. It consists of 12 locations 
where natural bends in the river cause the current to cross from bank to bank and result in heavier shoaling. So we've already spoken about the costs and the cost shares. So the general concept for the project is the Corps is going to let contracts and let them very soon and we'll start down in Southwest Pass with the deepening there. While we do that, the state will work on relocations. The state's cost share for relocations is 50-50. It's 50% for L uh, DOTD and then 50% for the utility owners. And these are things like utility cables, pipelines, and other infrastructure that lay on the river's bottom where we'll be dredging. But upon completion of the deepening in Southwest Pass and in conjunction with the state with the, their relocation responsibilities, the Corps will then let contracts to deepen the channel to 50 feet between New Orleans and Baton Rouge at the crossings. So in closing, what does all this mean? What this means is the Corps has a complete package and we are ready to turn dirt in record time. We have the reevaluation re study in hand from 2018. It validated the project's immense federal benefit. You heard the ratio 7.2 to 1. If you think about the project costs that you heard, this project pays for itself in two years. And you talked about the massive benefits, the increase in grain exports. But this project with a 7.2 to 1 benefit to cost ratio will pay for itself in two years. We have the environmental clearances that we need to proceed. Always a big hurdle for these large civil works projects. But we're even more excited about this because the core will use some of the sediment produced from the dredging to continue rebuilding Louisiana's vanishing coastline, increasing wetland habitat and increasing the sustainability along the coast. If you didn't know it, in the last 10 years, the Corps has built more than 14 and a half square miles of new land on the Louisiana coast, more than any other agency. And this project will produce about 14 to 1,500 more acres using the sediment that we dredge from the river. We are very excited about this. Most importantly, though, we have a study. We have environmental clearances. We have a plan for how the, the material we dredge will be beneficially used. We have money. We have FY20 work plan funding on hand, and we will execute the project's first deepening contracts in Southwest Pass before the end of the fiscal year. As we like to say in the military, this is an incredible flash to bang, uh, especially for a civil works project. Again, I can't say enough that this flash to bang and how quickly we were able to get the approvals, get the funding, get everything we need to move forward, it truly has been a team effort, and unfortunately, a lot of the folks who are part of that team are watching this online. So many thanks to all of you. I can tell you that the Corps of Engineers, General Holland, myself, and my team all look forward to the same close partnership and cooperation that have gotten us here over the last 35 years and certainly in the last two. And I look forward to celebrating when we complete the dredging here in another few years. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you again for the folks online. Building strong. God bless America. Thank you, Colonel Murphy. So at this time, we will uh, go ahead and commemorate this important milestone. We will now sign the dedication to partnership between the state and federal governments. Signing on behalf of the state of Louisiana will be Governor Edwards. Signing on behalf of the Corps is Major General Holland and Colonel Murphy. This partnership has been and will continue to be essential in delivering a project that will allow the Mississippi River in South Louisiana to remain competitive with the world's ports and integral to the nation's connection to the global economy. Following this signing, our speakers have agreed to remain behind to provide interviews and to answer any questions you may have. Again, thank you all for joining us here today as well as watching on our live stream. Thank you.